All right, let's see what to recap. Hmm. Star versus the forces of evil? Uh, nah, not now. Avatar? Uh, still haven't seen it. Steven Universe? Maybe I can squeeze a few more videos out of that, but nah. Hmm. Ugh, screw it. I just want to talk about The Owl House. So, if you don't know, The Owl House is one of the latest hit cartoons to come out of the Disney Channel. It's a fantasy, comedy, adventure, slice of life thing in the same vein as Gravity Falls and Star vs. the Forces of Evil. And it is really good. I mean, it's only one season in, but I'm already hooked. And since we don't really know when a season two is coming, I figured why not go ahead and recap everything that's happened so far? You know, for fun. This is everything you need to know about the Owl House so far. So, The Owl House is all about this girl named Luce. She's a quirky nerd with an overactive imagination that always gets her in trouble. In fact, the first time we see her, she's in the principal's office for accidentally letting a bunch of snakes loose at school. And her mom is just tired of it. So, she's shipping her off to a summer camp to make her normal. Top tier parenting right there. Kid too creative? Are they too happy? Just make them someone else's problem for a while, and when they get back, they'll have the personality of a plank of wood. Good job! But while Luce waits for the bus to camp, out of nowhere, this random owl snatches one of her things and runs off with it. In the middle of the day! Weird. She chases the owl into this abandoned, rundown house, goes through this really creepy looking door, and somehow is transported to a crazy fantasy realm. Huh. Wow. That was fast. This is the Boiling Isles, a magical realm built from the remains of a titan, also known as just like a really tall dude. All the stuff we consider fantasy junk on Earth, yeah, all that's real in the Boiling Isles. Fairies, griffins, demons, witches, and more. Speaking of witches, while Luce is still freaking out over somehow jumping dimensions, she meets a witch named Ida the Owl Lady. Ida's a bit of a scam artist, sending her pet owl to the human world through this fold-up portal door to collect garbage she can sell to people in the Boiling Isles. Miles. She's also wanted by the police. Is a fun fact for you. So when Luce draws a crowd to Ida's little flea market booth, a cop shows up to arrest her. But Ida's like, ha, nah, dude, it's episode one. I ain't getting caught. And speeds off, taking Luce with her. They soon wind up at Ida's house. You know, the owl house. Where Luce meets Ida's roommate. The ferocious, the evil, the king of demons. He's just a tiny little baby. Ida and Luce make a deal. Ida will help Luce get back home if she helps them break into a prison called the Conformatorium to steal back King's crown. It's not like Luce has any other options, so she agrees they get inside the prison, find King's, uh... Burger King crown, freaking clickbait, start a prison riot and escape in one piece. Ida keeps up her half of the deal and opens a portal to send Luce home. But uh, uh, given the choice between an awesome fantasy world where she can be herself and a boring summer camp that will literally erase all her personality, Luce makes the pretty obvious choice to stay in the Boiling Isles. Which is good, because if she hadn't, we wouldn't have a show. So now Luce is living in the Owl House, while lying to her mom that she's at summer camp because apparently there are cell towers that connect between realms. She's working for Ida, learning to become a witch, and finding out that the fantasy life ain't all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, Luce's excitement over her magical fantasy life goes south pretty fast since Ida's not really holding up her end of the bargain. Instead of teaching Luce about magic, she's mostly just giving her odd jobs and chores. Rip off artist! Oh, my so in the meantime, Luce goes exploring and makes a couple friends, Willow and Gus. These two are students at Hexide School of Magic and Demonics. Yep, we got a wizard school on our hands. Willow and Gus sneak Luce around the school, cause she's not really supposed to be there, and of course, hijinks ensue and Luce is banned from Hexide by the end of the day. And Ida loves that. We already know she's a bit of a rebel, but she really hates this witch school and the entire magic industry? Is that the right word? See, in the Boiling Isles, there are these things called covens. They're basically your majors in magic school. The specialty you choose to dedicate your magic powers to. Sounds cool. But when you choose a coven, all your other magic is locked away. That is, unless you make it into the fancy pants emperor's coven. Ida hates all that, so she never joined a coven. Which is a big no-no. That's why the cops are always after her. She's sticking it to the man, man. And then there's Lilith. Lilith is the leader of the Emperor's Coven, a super powerful witch, and Ida's sister. Being the head of the Emperor's Coven, she's the one in charge of hunting down Ida. She's always trying to catch her, arrest her, and convince her to just join the Emperor's Coven already. So yeah, 
they don't get along. It's pretty easy to see why Ida hates all this coven stuff. But even with all that, she still hasn't done much to teach Luce any magic herself. Well, at least, not directly. See, one of the few times Ida reluctantly decided to actually teach Luz something, she was like, ugh, fine, just make a circle in the air using the power stored inside the gross green sack attached to your heart and boom. But I don't have a green sack attached to my- Don't care, goodbye, going to sleep forever. Well, that was a bust. Oh God, giant monster! So yeah, fun fact. Ida's cursed! She doesn't remember why. All she knows is that she has to take her medicine or else... Yeah. So while Luce is dealing with that, she discovers that even though humans have no magic ability, she can cast spells of her own using an ancient method called... Drawing. <laughs> By drawing these glyphs, Luce can actually do magic and no one really knows how it works. But she just happens to learn this handy dandy new skill just in time to turn Ida back to normal. Hooray! Ida's not an owl beast anymore, King still hasn't done much for the overall plot, and Luce is finally learning to become a witch. But there's another witch in training who's not too keen on Luce's antics. Introducing... Amity. She's the top student at Hexide, and she has had Luce on her crap list ever since she got banned from school. At least, that's how it started. After learning more about each other through several near-death experiences, Amity and Luce start to see more eye to eye. Eventually, Luce learns that Amity is just under a lot of pressure to live up to unrealistic expectations, Amity learns that Luce is just trying to find her way in this crazy new world, and eventually, they become friends, which is nice. But I mean, they don't really see each other a ton. It's not like they go to the same school or anything. Hey kid, I don't really know what I'm doing. So uh, you're going to school now, okay, bye. Okay, sure. Ida went down to Hexide, spoke to the principal, got the ban lifted, somehow didn't get arrested in the process. And now Luce is going to witch school. Hooray, school is cool. Ugh. Being at Hexide's going all right for Luce. Or, well, it's a cartoon about magic school, so obviously going all right means constantly getting in trouble, fighting off monsters, and nearly dying on a weekly basis. You know, high school. But then Grom comes around. Grom is Hexide's version of prom. There's music and dancing and a fight to the death between one chosen student and a monster that manifests itself as their greatest fears. You know, high school. <laughs> and this year, the chosen student is Amity. Oh boy. Well, at least we got to know her a bit before she dies. Actually, Luce decides to take Amity's place and face her own fear instead. And this goes okay, until it doesn't. The Grom monster takes the form of Luce's mom scolding her over lying about going to camp, and Luce just can't confront it. But then Amity steps in to save Luce from Grom. The monster shapeshifts to become Amity's biggest fear, and all it does is take a piece of paper out of her pocket and rip it up. The paper read, will you go to Grom with me? Luce sees this and was like, aw, you were afraid of getting rejected, you stupid idiot. And then the two defeat Grom together through the power of dance. So everything was fine in the end. But wait, the other half of Amity's note has become unfolded. The entire note reads, Loose, will you go to Grom with me? So while the fandom freaks out over that, let's pop back over to Ida. While Luce is going to school, learning magic, and making friends, Ida's struggling. Her curse is getting worse. It takes more elixirs and more of Ida's own magic to keep the Owl Beast at bay. Lilith keeps telling her that if she just joins the Emperor's Coven, the Emperor could heal the curse himself. But uh, <laughs> yeah. That's a no-go. Then one day, Luce and her friends take a field trip to the Emperor's castle right around the same time Lilith barges into said castle after another failed attempt to arrest Ida. Luce follows her to the Emperor's room and this place, this place is creepy, man. There's a giant green heart pumping over the throne and as Lilith approaches, the Emperor is struggling to breathe. But then he cracks open whatever this is, pours hot soup in his eyes and he's suddenly better. This is normal. Very normal. But yeah, this is Emperor Bellows. 50 years ago, he rose to power claiming that he could speak to the Titan that birthed the Boiling Isles and said everyone was doing magic wrong. They were all using magic freely, like Ida. But Bellows was like, heh, 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 no. So he created the coven system and punished anyone who didn't fall in line. Emperor Bellows promised to heal Ida's curse if Lilith can arrest her and bring her to him. But if Lilith fails, she'll be fired and treated like a criminal. So while Luce is sneaking around the castle, Lilith attacks and takes her hostage to draw Ida out. The two then meet at the castle for a duel. They're flying through the air, teleporting, zapping each other all pshoo, 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 and it's really cool. But then Lilith's like, oh, by the way, that curse that ruined your life? 
Yeah, that was me. I did that. And I feel bad about it, but eh, I'm gonna throw your kid off a cliff now. <laughs> so that's a thing now. Truth's out, Ida's furious, and Luce is falling to her death. And flashback time. So way back when Ida and Lilith were kids, they were training at Hexide. And for their final exam, they'd have to battle each other to decide who would enter the Emperor's Coven. But Lilith knew Ida was better than her. So she put a curse on her that she thought would stop her powers for a day. Instead, it just turned her into a giant owl beast. Ida didn't even want to join the Coven. You didn't have to do any of this, but Oh well, this is reality now. Ida is now forever cursed for no good reason, and Lilith just takes her place at the Emperor's Coven. Flash forward back to the action. Luce is still falling to her death, but Ida quickly casts a spell to save her, using up the last of the magic, keeping her from permanently becoming the Owl Beast. All right, cool. So we all hate Lilith now, right? We're in agreement here? Sick. But the Emperor promised to heal Ida, right? That's why Lilith's been doing all this. Well, guess what? Bellos lied, refuses to heal Ida, and now he's gonna turn her into petrified stone and force everyone to watch. Whoopsies! Oopsie poopsies! Luce and King manage to infiltrate the castle and find Ida, who comes to her senses long enough to give Luce the portal to the human realm and tell her to go home. Ida is then carted away to be petrified. Big poopy. But then Lilith shows up and asks to work with Luce to make things right. Big poopy? But of course, the emperor immediately captures them. Big poopy. Bellos makes Luce a deal. He'll let Luce go to save her friends in exchange for the portal to the human realm. We don't really know why he wants it yet, but it's probably for bad reasons. But Luce agrees, only to pull a fast one on the emperor, using her magic to rig the portal to explode, stopping the emperor's plans, but destroying her only way back home. Luce then stops the petrification, escapes with her friends, and heads back to the Owl House. Lilith redeems herself by casting a spell to give herself half of Ida's curse, which turns Ida back to normal, but her magic's still gone. But hey, now Luce gets to teach Ida how to do all that cool paper magic stuff. Everyone is safe, and they all lived happily ever after. For now? Yeah, all this was just season one. The Emperor still has some tricks up his sleeve. It all has to do with something called the Day of Unity and this giant machine he's building out of the remains of Ida's portal door. Plus, Luce's mom keeps getting all of these letters from Luce at camp that she definitely isn't sending. So even though so much has already happened in just this one season, the Owl House is just getting started. But I can't help but feel like I've forgotten something. I've covered every major plot point across all the episodes. I got most of the big cliffhangers, but I just feel like something's missing. Ah! I forgot Hootie! How could you forget about the best character in the show, Hoot Hoot? I protect the house, I'm a magical beast. I'm okay, really long. I maybe I should have just done another I'm Steven really Universe long. video. And we're back. Back to what you ask? Why, back to the ongoing plot recap of the Disney Channel animated series, The Owl House video series. Whatever. Yep, it's time to revisit the Owl House, the Disney Channel cartoon about a teenage girl getting lost in another dimension, but not the one with frogs or the one about racism. I recapped season one of this show last year, and now that season two's wrapped up, it's time for me to regurgitate everything I saw back to you guys, but with far worse drawings and explanations and everything else. As always, things are definitely gonna be oversimplified here. If you want the full Owl House experience, Watch the Owl House. These recaps are basically cartoon cliff notes, just keep that in mind. So first, where'd we leave off in season one? Well, for a full deep dive into that, there's my season one recap. But basically, a girl named Luz trips into a world of magic, learns to cast spells with paper, and meets an owl lady named Ida who becomes her new mom. And King is also there. New mom Ida hates the emperor, Bellos, because he makes everyone join something called a coven, which means they can only practice one kind of magic, indicated by the sigil they all get branded with. Also, Bellos sometimes has heart palpitations that nearly turn him into a giant monster, and he has to consume the essence of these things called palismen to stop it. This normal is the most normal, and new mom Ida also turns into a monster sometimes because her sister Lilith was mean. But after fighting for a while, they make up and decide to share the curse equally. Then Luz fights Bellos because he's evil and doing evil things. He keeps going on about some stupid day of unity and it's annoying. So she beats him up, but blows up her only way home in the process. 
Oops. Okay, season one mini recap over. Now it's season two and Lilith is just crashing at the owl house. Repairing her relationship with Ida, getting used to her new curse, and befriending that big owl worm thing that lives in their walls, Hootie. They seem to be getting along. Lilith and Ida are struggling without their magic, but Luce is teaching them to use glyphs. Luce herself is basically the same as always. Going on adventures, learning new spells, trying to find a way home, and definitely not super obviously crushing on her former rival Amity. All that blushing is just because of allergies. Meanwhile, Belos is rebuilding the portal to the human realm and preparing for the Day of Unity, which is kind of the big, bad, ticking clock of the season. But besides the Day of Unity, the main focus of this season is Luce's attempts to get back to the human realm. And I mean, yeah, I, that's kind of always been the point. But things actually start to pick up steam when Luce gets tipped off to an interesting fact. She's not the only human to have visited the Boiling Isles. So she meets up with Amity and the two go digging at the local library where they discover ancient diary logs in a mouse? Skeleton? It doesn't matter. This was the diary of a human named Philip Witterbane who got lost in the Boiling Isles a long time ago and wrote about the things he learned as he tried to get back home. Almost like, a journal? Okay, I'll stop. But Luce is now one step closer to finding a way home, and she got to spend some time with Amity, who now has purple hair and gives Luce a kiss on the cheek. I swear to God, I've never seen two people blush more in my life. Starting to worry it's some kind of circulatory issue. Luce starts studying as much as she can from Philip's diaries and learns about something called Titan's blood. Yeah, you know those giant skeletal remains this entire civilization is built on? Yeah, that used to be a Titan. They're like gods in the Boiling Isles. And apparently, even just a little bit of their blood is powerful enough to tear the fabric of reality and open portals to other dimensions. But since the Titans are extinct, their blood is extremely rare. And obviously, Belos is after it too. <laughs> So, uh, to make a long story short, after a series of wacky adventures, people nearly die. Both Luce and Belos end up with some Titan's blood. Belos needs it to rebuild the main portal, but Luce decides to build a portal door of her own. It's pretty unstable and not fully functional. She can look into the human realm, but not enter it. So, Luce is able to get a glimpse of home where she finds... Oh! Okay! Another loose? Well, not really. This is V, a shape-shifting demon from the Boiling Isles who's been living in Luce's place since she's been gone. Yeah, it turns out Luce's mom has had absolutely no idea she's been missing this entire time. Completely unaware. But of course, once she's faced with a... Uh, this scenario, some questions had to be asked. Luce's mom finds out about everything. She lets V stay with her, but is naturally heartbroken that Luce chose to stay in the Boiling Isles instead of coming home. And just as the portal starts to fail, Luce promises her mom to come back home and stay. Luce is then pulled back into the Boiling Isles, the portal collapses in on itself, and that is the last she sees of her mom for now. But Luce isn't done hopping into other worlds, now teaming up with Lilith to travel back, back in time. time. Luce wants to meet that Philip guy and try to get his help. But of course, he is from a very long time ago. And apparently, time travel is absolutely definitely something you can do in the Boiling Isles, just no one had ever actually done it until now. Luce and Lilith just out here casually discovering time travel. They hop back in time and manage to find Philip, who's acting a little sketchy, not gonna lie. But he does agree to help Luce if she helps him find this mysterious character he's been looking for, the Collector. So the three of them all head to, well, the Titan's head. Luce and Lilith help Philip. Luce and Lil... <laughs> There's so many L's, why are there so many L's? Luce and Lilith help Philip open this big door and Philip's like, oh, would you look at that? It's time to, uh, t time for, time for me to, uh, it's time, time for the, uh, it's time, time. Betrayal! A giant monster that Philip knew would be there attacks our heroes while Philip just moseys on over to grab this shiny round tablet with a moon on it and dips. Luckily, our heroes escape, Lilith punches Philip in the face, and they head back to their time. Oh, and Philip is definitely Bellows. Look at him. He's eating palismen, hating witches. Yeah, that's Bellows. But Luz doesn't know that yet, so shh, 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 shh. Uh, so, now let's shift focus onto someone who hasn't really had a whole lot of spotlight so far, King, the good old king of demons. Or at least, that's what he calls himself. He's just a little guy. And how could he have been the king of anything? Well, Lilith and Hootie were thinking the same thing. So, to prove he's not lying, King takes the gang all the way to this castle on a mysterious uncharted island. According to King, this castle is where he ruled over armies and ate glorious feasts. But Ida's like, 
<sighs> yeah, so apparently none of that King of Demons stuff was true. Ida just found King eating bugs in this castle, took him home with her, and made up all the King of Demons stuff to make him happy. So King's life is a lie, but that doesn't explain what he was doing in this castle in the first place. Well, turns out this is where he was born, hatched from an egg and left on his own after hearing the roar of what he believes to have been his dad. King might not be the King of Demons, but there's definitely a lot more to learn about who he really is. And King is now determined to find his dad and get answers. But speaking of parents, between Luce getting closer to going home and King looking to find his dad, new mom Ida is starting to get kind of nervous. She's really grown to love her little family and now it feels like everyone's trying to leave. So she does what anyone should do in this situation, Drink the pain away. But after enabling her unhealthy coping mechanism, she runs into a group of rebel bards fighting some of the Emperor's scouts. And if there's one thing that can cheer Ida up, it's sticking it to the Emperor's coven. So she helps the bards escape, only to discover... <gasps> Uh, uh, who is that? This is Rain Whispers. They're actually the head of the Bard Coven, secretly rebelling against the Emperor and his coven system. And they just happen to also be Ida's ex. But they still seem to get along, so, you know, it's fine. It's not weird. Don't make it weird. Ida decides to run with Rain's group of rebels for a bit to stop some of Bellos' plans. He's been arresting a bunch of wild witches and forcing them to join covens for some reason. I mean, that's kind of what he was already doing, but he's doing it harder now. But the bards are caught by two other coven heads, Darius and Eberwolf. Ida nearly sacrifices herself to defeat them, still fearing that her family doesn't need her anymore. But Rain's like, dude, Shut up, like actually shut up. And they give themselves over to the coven heads to let Ida escape. Man, the season's been heavy so far. Everyone's got so much to deal with. And with all this happening at once, I know exactly what you're thinking. What about Hootie? That's right, this Mickey Mouse voiced owl worm building thing is finally plot relevant. Woo! See, Hootie sees just how much everyone's going through and decides to help out. But of course, this is Hootie, the dude who barfs in almost every episode he's in. So naturally, it all goes horribly wrong, until it doesn't. Completely by accident, Hootie helps King discover that he has supersonic scream powers, he helps Ida come to peace with her curse, unlocking this wicked looking harpy form, and he helps Luz finally ask out Amity. And you know what that means, more blushing. Are you okay? This much blushing can't be healthy, do you need medical assistance? She says yes, obviously, meaning that Luz and Amity are finally an official couple. Hooray! Hootie has served a purpose and everyone had their status quo changed in one fell swoop. Man, it's like they had to squeeze more of their story into less episodes because Disney wouldn't give them a full third season or something. I don't know. So that's what all the good guys are up to. What about the villains? Well, as we know, Belos is still working on rebuilding the portal and prepping for the Day of Unity with the Collector. We don't know much about him yet, we just know he's super powerful. Though technically he's trapped in that moon tablet, communicating with Belos as a shadow on the wall. And Belos struck a deal with the Collector. He teaches Belos super powerful magic to help with the Day of Unity, and in return, Belos will use some of his Titan's blood to set him free from the tablet. I'm sure he'll keep up his end of the bargain. But it's not just Belos that Luce and the gang have to put up with this season. There's also Belos' nephew and right-hand man, the Golden Guard, aka Hunter. This guy's a pretty consistent thorn in our hero's sides throughout the season. But after a few run-ins with Luce and her friends, you can see him start to question what he's doing. Especially as we see how Belos mistreats him and hands him empty promises so he'll do what he's told. Man, so many mysteries with this Belos guy. If only we could find out what he's thinking. Like really just travel inside his mind. So Luce travels inside his mind, and she brought Hunter with her. It was an accident. But this gives her a great opportunity to find out more about Belos' plan and show Hunter that he shouldn't trust Belos. The two go exploring through Belos' mind and we finally get all the answers. First off, the Day of Unity. Belos promised the people of the Boiling Isles that the Day of Unity would purge the world of wild magic and create a new paradise for the worthy. And well, at least half of that's true, but the full story is way more concerning. See, Belos has been working with the Collector on something called a draining spell that he plans to cast on the Day of Unity, which will zap all the power from every witch branded with a coven sigil and wipe out not just all magic, but all life in the Boiling Isles. And all in the name of protecting humanity from evil. So yeah. That's not a good thing. Though it does explain why Bellos dedicated so much of his life to creating the coven system and the bogus stories behind it. It allowed him to easily brand nearly every witch with some kind of sigil. The dude's nothing more than a witch hunter who used snake oil tactics to gain power. Even changing his name to Bellos because Philip kept getting run out of town. And also, let's not ignore this, 
Bellos is old, like way old. Remember, this is the same guy Luce had to discover time travel just to meet. He's been consuming the souls of palace men as a way of keeping himself alive, but all those palace men souls jostling around inside of him have warped and corrupted him. So he's always on the verge of transforming into this hideous monster. But that's not all. Hunter sees firsthand how Bellos' stories about wild magic hurting his family were all lies to sell people on the coven system. He even faked being attacked by wild witches in front of a crowd of people with the help of, uh, that's the Golden Guard. That's Hunter. And I don't mean they look similar, I mean, that is Hunter. But this was a long time ago. How's that work? So yeah, here we find out that Hunter is something called a Grimwalker. Yeah, basically a copy of someone Bellos knew a long time ago. And he's not the first. Hunter is just the latest in a long, long, long line of copies. All the others went against Bellos at one point or another, so he, uh got rid of them. Hunter learns he's not who he thought he was, Luce learns exactly who Bellos is, and the two manage to escape Bellos' mind. But now, they're in more danger than ever. Bellos knows they were in his mind, so they gotta hide. Hunter leaves the Emperor's Coven and starts hiding out at Hexide School, and Luce just takes a little trip to another mysterious, uncharted place with Hootie and King, where they all meet... Oh! More kings! Dude, is this King's family? Well, no, unfortunately. These guys are just regular old witches who call themselves Titan Trappers. According to them, though Titans are supposedly extinct, there's still one more out there, and they've dedicated their lives to learning to trap that Titan so they can kill it. You know, mercilessly, and with murder. Heck, they even dress up like Titans to trap it. Huh. Well, this has implications. So, King, just a little guy King, is a titan, the last of the titans. Those unfathomably gigantic creatures who are basically the gods of this world. The creatures so powerful that even just a drop of their blood can create interdimensional portals. Yeah, King is uh, one of that. And he's currently surrounded by an entire town of people who have dedicated their lives to trapping and killing his kind. Naturally, Lou scoops up King and bolts out of there. Don't worry, she took Hootie too. They all make it back safe and the Owl House has been ransacked. Yeah, uh, the Emperor had the whole place trashed. Luckily, Ida and Lilith were able to escape and everyone eventually reunites. Ida, Lilith, Luce, King, and an entire secret rebellion group. Uh, so, turns out, Rain and their bards are all okay, and the two coven heads that captured them before, Darius and Everwolf, were actually on their side the entire time. Cool, oh, and there's Steve. He's Steve. These guys all formed a rebellion to stop the Day of Unity, and they've got a plan. See, Belos needs all nine of the Coven Head's magic to power the draining spell. So the group wants Ida, disguised as Rain, to take their place so the Owl Beast curse can corrupt the spell. Which means, after a lifetime of avoiding it, Ida finally had to join a coven and be given a sigil. Meanwhile, Luce finally meets back up with her friends Willow and Gus, plus Hunter, who's now on their side. He's like best friends with Gus, it's cool. And of course, Amity. I kind of feel bad that I've not been talking about her as much. She's been dealing with a lot of her own family stuff this season. Her mom is super controlling, very business oriented, and she's been creating these robots for the Emperor's army. Meanwhile, her dad has just kind of been letting it all happen, even though no one is happy. Eventually, he does kind of talk to Amity and they start to work things out. But the mom, just total lost cause. She knew about everything Bellos was planning. She was just a total, just like, there's, there is definitely a divorce in the future. <laughs> but Luce and Amity finally reunite and even share their first kiss, which is an incredibly sweet moment. You can tell it's important because the animation gets fancier. But before too long, Luce gets kidnapped and taken back to Belos's lair. You know, the Titan's head. Belos himself attracts a massive crowd to the Day of Unity ceremony and begins the draining spell. He then quickly zips back to the Titan's head where the collector's like, this is awesome. You're gonna release me now, right? Right? Yeah. Shocker, Bellos doesn't hold up his end of the bargain and straight up tosses the collector's tablet down a chasm. This is also where he put the other hunters when he killed them. You can see their remains, they're all dead down there. And all this just in time for Luce to finally get dropped off at the lair. So once again, it's Luce against Bellos. Meanwhile, at the ceremony, Ida and Rain's plan does work to corrupt the draining spell, 
until the Coven Heads catch on to their plan and force Rain to take their spot in the spell, allowing it to fully activate, draining all the life and power from any witch branded with a sigil. So fun, everyone's about to die. But back at the Titan's head, Luce pulls a fast one on Bellows, again, and uses this glove she found straight up just lying around his lair to brand Bellows with a sigil, meaning he's now being affected by his own draining spell. But instead of reversing the spell, he collapses and transforms into that giant gross monster right as Luce's friends show up to help out, including King, who manages to find the Collector's tablet down in that chasm and starts chatting. The Collector immediately recognizes King as a Titan, which means he has the power to set him free. So the two strike a deal. King sets the Collector free if the Collector stops the draining spell. One pinky promise later and the tablet cracks open, unleashing… huh. That guy from FNAF. Okay, seriously, this is the Collector. He's a little kid with the powers of God. He stops Bellows mid-attack like it was nothing. And then with one boop of his forehead, he does this. Uh, I think Bellows is dead. I mean, he just got splattered by an otherworldly cosmic entity with powers beyond comprehension. I. I, I, I don't think you can come back from that. The dude then stops the draining spell with just a wave of his finger, saving millions of lives in a second. But then he gets kind of carried away and starts bending the world around him for fun, putting Luce and her friends in immediate danger. Their only option to make it out alive being Bellos' portal to the human realm. I see where they're going with this. Unfortunately, King wasn't able to escape with the others, leaving him and Ida in the Boiling Isles as Luce, Amity, Hunter, Willow, and Gus all become trapped in the human realm, officially bringing season two to an end. Yep, Luce takes everyone back to her house where she can finally reunite with her mom, and then the credits roll. Yeah, things definitely got a lot more intense this season, and unfortunately, there's just not a whole lot of the Owl House left after this. The upcoming third season is not only going to be the show's last, but it's not even a full season. It's just three 44-minute specials. But even with the show so close to its end, we've been left on the biggest cliffhanger so far. What is the Collector going to do to the Boiling Isles? What about King, Ida, Lilith, Rain, all of them? What What's gonna happen in the human realm? What about Hootie? We don't know yet, but what I do know is I wanna watch Bellos get splattered again. Oh man, that is brutal. And here we go. After three years and three seasons, Kinda. The hit Disney Channel cartoon, The Owl House, has finally come to an end. This show about a girl named Luce stumbling into a new world of fantasy and adventure, meeting new friends like Ida and King, finding herself and saving the world, was such an amazing experience. Even if Disney wanted to sabotage it every chance it had. I mean, where I live, the finale didn't air on YouTube until 1.30 a.m. Disney, why do you hate this show so much? But. Whatever. The show aired its final episode earlier this month, and as is tradition here, now I gotta recap the whole thing for you guys with some bad jokes and even worse drawings. Now, if you're just tuning in, this is the third and final part in an ongoing series of Owl House recaps. And that means right away we're gonna be getting into massive big boy spoiler territory. So where we leave off in season two? Oh yeah, uh, Luce, Amity, Willow, Gus, and Hunter had all been flung back into the human realm after the events of the Day of Unity, where the evil Emperor Bellos teamed up with this cosmic entity called the Collector to cast a dangerous spell that would wipe out everyone in the Boiling Isles. King freed the Collector from this little moon tablet prison. He then absolutely destroyed Bellos with the flick of his finger, and then he started wreaking havoc on the Boiling Isles. Plus, we learned that Bellos used to be this jerk of a human named Philip Wittabane, who Luce accidentally helped when she traveled back in time to talk to him, not knowing that he was Bellos. Oops. We found out that King is actually the last of an ancient race of magical behemoths called Titans, and that the giant Titan corpse that this whole land is built on is actually actually his dad. Fun. Fun times. Luce and Amity shared their first kiss, which Disney that Disney was just so cool about. <laughs> and we found out that Luce's rival turned friend Hunter is actually one in a long line of clones of some dude Bellos used to hunt witches with. Which, I'll just spoil it right now, it was his brother Caleb. It doesn't play too much into the plot of the last few episodes, so it's just, it's his brother. Hunter is a clone of Bellos' brother Caleb. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you're just hopping into this series, you've missed You've missed a lot. <laughs> and I mentioned basically all of this last time, but there were two little things that I did miss. First, right before the Day of Unity, Luce actually got her palisman, which are those cute animal things that turn into witch's staffs. But right now, it's just an egg, and it'll only hatch when Luce bonds with it by sharing her innermost desire. But since everything's so tense and chaotic and complicated right now, she doesn't even know what to think. So until then, 
Egg. Oh, uh, and then there's Bellows. You might think this dude would be dead considering his entire physical being was splattered against a wall like one of those sticky hands. But nah, he's just goop now. Living, breathing, goop. And you see this? Yeah, that blink and you miss it moment at the end of the last episode is actually Bellows sneaking his way into the human realm. I, uh, I, I kind of missed that part. And it's not that I just forgot to mention it. I I, I turned the video off by that point. I, <laughs> I just completely missed it. So at the start of season three, Luce is back home for the first time in forever. And she and all of her friends take up shelter at her mom's house. So Luce is finally able to reunite with her mom, Camila, after months of being stuck in the demon realm. Oh, and don't forget, that shape-shifting demon who took Luce's place for a while, V, still there too. She seems to be doing well, again, I'm sorry if you missed everything up to this point. <laughs> There's a lot to keep track of. And even with the whole, our home is being destroyed as we speak and we have no way to stop it thing kind of looming over everyone, the gang gets on pretty well in the human realm. They learn about human stuff, they try to build ways back to the demon realm, and Luce comes out to her mama's bye, which is super sweet. But obviously, as much fun as they might be having, they gotta get back to the boiling aisles. But in order to do that, they'd need Titan's blood, a rare magical substance that is the key to creating portals between realms. Luckily, the shack that Amity, Willow, Gus, and Hunter are staying in just happened to have a map to Titan's blood buried under the floorboards. Yeah, that's, uh, that's convenient. <laughs> and after enough digging, Hunter's palisman Flapjack managed to find it. Was that? Oh, right. <laughs> uh, that's another thing I forgot to mention last time. Hunter, the grim walker with no magical powers, got a palisman. Is a cute little cardinal named Flapjack and their best friends. So with the map to Titan's blood in their hands, the group goes out to investigate, but Hunter stays behind for a minute only to be attacked by evil goop. Yeah, uh, so remember how Bellos got slushied by the collector and then managed to ooze his way back into the human realm? Well, some of his gross goopy self has been hiding out in this shack. And when Hunter touches this goop, Bellos starts to infect his mind, making Hunter see visions of Bellos everywhere and kind of driving him mad. So there's a lot going on, and things kind of reach ahead on Halloween night when the gang all go to a local haunted hayride. Hunter once again sees a vision of Bellos in the distance, and realizing that Bellos must be after the Titan's blood too, he grabs loose and they go off to investigate on their own, eventually reaching this nifty looking graveyard. This is, this is probably not another, nothing possible bad could happen here, no, no. <laughs> and here, Bellos' possession of Hunter takes full control. Bellos as Hunter attacks Luce right as the rest of the gang find out where they ran off to. Which means we've got our first big fight scene of the season. And it's got the fancy animation too. If Flapjack does their best to help in the fight, but Bellos just grabs them and cracks them open without a second thought. Just freaking jerk, mean to birds. And this is the last straw. Hunter manages to regain control of himself long enough to grab the Titan's blood and toss it into a nearby lake. But Bellos takes back over and dives head first after it, nearly drowning Hunter. That is until Camila just jumps right in too, bringing Hunter back to the surface like a freaking hero. Bellos finally ejects himself from Hunter's body, grabs the Titan's blood, and just pieces out back to the demon realm. But Hunter is left barely clinging to life. That is until Flapjack, still heavily injured, flies in and sacrifices themselves so that their magic can revive Hunter. The gang then get up, dust themselves off, and hop through the portal after Bellos. Even Camila. Oh, uh, V stays behind though. So say goodbye to them for the rest of the video. Bye V. I like that you were voiced by Amethyst. So while all this was going on, back in the Boiling Isles, the Collector is just messing the whole place up. He's like, ha, this is fun, let's play a game. And everyone else is like, ah! Yeah, the Collector's been running around turning everyone into toy puppets to play games with, but keeps King around to be friends. Flash forward a bit to when Luce and the gang make it back to the Demon Realm and, Oh my God, look at what the collector's done to this place. This is a dang Lisa Frank nightmare. Where's Dippy Fresh when you need him, geez. But either way, they push forward and eventually find their way to their old school hex side where they meet a bunch of survivors and start to hatch a plan. They gotta get up there. That castle hovering above the Titan's head is called the Archives. The collector's castle where he's storing all the people he's turned into puppets. And up in the archives, the collector just likes to hang out with King, who's trying desperately to rein in the collector's destructive tendencies. But while the collector isn't looking, King 
King sneaks off to this secret lair deeper in the archives where we find Ida and Lilith. Both safe, sound, and not toys. The three of them are working to learn about the Collector and find a way to eventually stop him so things can go back to normal. But King wants to be careful. The Collector, as powerful as he is, is just a kid, and it doesn't seem like he has any family left. King knows what it's like to be the last of his kind. He understands the Collector and wants to help, but also knows that he has to be stopped. Meanwhile, back at Hexide, just a whole bunch of crap's going down. Uh, breaking it down real quick. One, Luce uses memory magic to find this crazy glyph she once saw Belos use to travel directly to the Titan's head. That'll be useful. Two, Kikimura shows up. I, I can't remember if I've mentioned her, but she's crazy and starts attacking the gang. Three, after a series of unfortunate events involving Willow getting overwhelmed and losing control of her powers, Hunter somehow develops magic powers he never had before, using them to save his friends, and most importantly, four, while hiding from Kikimura, Luce and Camila finally have a heart-to-heart -heart talk where Camila apologizes for trying to turn Luce into something she's not. And having finally realized that all she ever wanted was to be understood, Luce's palace maneg finally begins to hatch. And just in time for the rest of the gang to catch up so they can all escape to the Titan's head. And that's the last we'll see of Kikimura. Say bye, everyone. Bye. I never really liked you. Once everyone's safe and sound at the Titan's head, Luce's palisman fully hatches, revealing a worm on a string. Okay, no. Well, it kinda. This is String Bean. They're a snake shifter, a weird little snake thing that can turn into whatever other creature they want. It's cute. And for a brief moment, everything seems okay. That is, until the Collector attacks. And wait, is that rain? What are they doing with the Collector? Ah, right. Yeah, forgot about that. So while all this was happening, Goopy Goop Bellos needed a new body to inhabit, eventually finding his way into the archives and possessing Rain Whispers, former head of the Bard Coven, rebel against Bellos, and Ida's old romantic partner. While possessing their body, Bellos starts to manipulate the Collector, telling him he's in danger, that King is going to betray him, and that Luce is back to stop him. Which, to be fair, isn't entirely wrong. It's just a little exaggerated. So right as Luce's palisman hatches and everyone feels safe for a moment, we see the Collector and Bellos spying on them. The Collector is now led to believe that everything Bellos said was the truth, so when Bellos tells the Collector to attack, he does. And with that, we're in finale territory. No going back now. And right at the start, Things aren't going that great. The Collector turned Luce's friends into puppets and is using them to trap Luce, Ida, and King in waking nightmares. But when the Collector goofs up his Amity and says, I challenge you to a witch's battle, Luce is like, <laughs> um, actually, it's witch's duel. <laughs> and quickly catches on to what's happening. The absolute power of Luce's friggin' dorkiness momentarily breaks the illusion so her friends can tell her how to snap out of it. So using her light glyphs, Luce is able to wake herself up and do the same for Ida and King. And for the first time this whole season, Luce, Ida, and King are all finally back together. The reunion is short though, as the Collector pops in to play some games with them. And by play games, I of course mean place their lives in mortal danger for his amusement. Yeah, the Collector doesn't really have a grasp on the whole concept of death and what that means to mortals. He kind of looks at everyone around him as, well, toys. So we get another montage of Luce and the gang being put through the Collector's wacky games. Their lives are in danger. Man, a lot of montages this season, huh? It's almost as if they were planning to make a lot more episodes, but for some reason weren't allowed to and had to cram a whole season's worth of story into just three episodes, but... <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds of that? Anyway, while all this was going on, Bellos, still controlling Rain, flies off to their old castle with just just a real bad idea. So remember how I said the Boiling Isles is built on the corpse of a giant dead Titan? And remember how Bellos's old throne room was built at the heart of the Titan? And even though it was dead, the heart was still beating? And remember how Bellos can now possess whatever or whoever he wants? Yeah. Nah, it's probably nothing. Let's check back in on Luce. After trying to play with Luce, Ida, and King for a while, and them very clearly not being into it, it being the imminent threat on their lives, the Collector gets sad, and the gang is finally able to just sit down and talk to him. And here we get some long-awaited backstory on the Collector. Apparently, a... Hmm. Apparently, a long time ago, the Collector's siblings, called the Archivists, sent him down to the Boiling Isles to play with all the Titans that roam the surface. And the Collector made friends with all the little baby Titans, just like King. But the sheer power of the Titans scared the Archivists. Apparently, the only thing more powerful than a Collector's magic is a Titan. So the Archivists started wiping them out one by one, and that made the big Papa Titan real mad. But then he goofed up and blamed the Collector for what his siblings did, trapping him in that moon tablet and sealing 
stealing him away for yeah, as long as it took to get to this point. So the collector really is just a lonely kid looking to make friends, but doesn't know how. So Luce decides to teach him by showing him how she became friends with Ida, King, and the others, bringing him to multiple places across the Boiling Isles that meant a lot to her. Wait, what? what's that over there? Ah! Okay, so while Luce was teaching the Collector about kindness and forgiveness, Bellos ditched Rain's body and hopped right into the Titan's heart, now taking control of the entire Boiling Isles. That's... That, that's maybe not going to be helpful. And with the power of a Titan now at his fingertips, what's the first thing that Bellos does? Moss! Moss everywhere! Evil death-bringing moss! Bellos's moss spreads all across the Boiling Isles, consuming everything in its path, and soon forming a smaller, but still treacherously large titan itself. This mossy Bellos titan just starts spitting blue all over the place. But the Collector, having processed what Luce taught him, decides to pull a Steven Universe and just tries to hug it out. Okay, no, Luz flies in in the last second to save the Collector. But in doing so, she got hit and the infection started. Soon, it fully overtook her, disintegrated, and left Luz dead and gone. Cause of death? Moss. Obviously, this enrages Ida and King, who both go into full monster mode and attack Bellos. And the Collector starts to process that Luz is dead and what that really means. Meanwhile, Luz is fine. Well, Kinda. She is dead, but she's not gone. We see her floating through this weird interdimensional purgatory where she meets, get this, Papa Titan. Yes, King's dad. The Titan the Boiling Isles is built on and the one Bellos is currently puppeting. Also, he's voiced by Aaron Hansen from Game Grumps. This guy? Look at me! <laughs> He does a great job. Anyway, Papa Titan is like, Luce, you looked after my kid real good. As a reward, here's literally all my powers. Okay, go save the world. I'm gonna die now. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> And then Luce just shoots right back up to the surface, now reborn with crazy Titan superpowers. She saves Ida King and the Collector from Bellos and flies off to the Titan's head. The Collector goes off on his own to protect everyone in the archives, having learned the error of his ways. And Luce, Ida, and King just go on a moss killing spree, helping to stop Bellos' invasion of the Boiling Isles before plunging right into the heart of the Titan, saving Rain, who's been stuck in the moss this whole time, and then just ripping Bellos out of the Titan's heart by hand. Hand. And with Bellows forced out of the Titan, he loses control, all the moss evaporates, and the Boiling Isles is saved. Hooray! But Bellows isn't done. With his plan completely foiled, this guy makes one last desperate attempt to gain control. He shapeshifts to take the form of his former self, Philip Wittabane, and lies through his teeth. He's like, oh, wow, did I do that? <laughs> That's awkward, right? Well, <laughs> it's a good thing you were here. I was actually cursed the whole time. That's... Uh, that's right, and you freed me, and... <laughs> yeah, no one's buying any of Bellos' crap anymore. And Luce just backs away while Bellos is pelted with acid rain and literally stomped out of existence by Ida, King, and Rain. So Bellos is dead. Luce then loses her Titan powers, the Collector helps turn everyone back to normal and return them home, and all our heroes get reunited with their families. And... wait. Hold on. One, two, three, four... Did no one die? Like, besides Bellas and Flapjack? Yeah. Huh. Would you look at that? <laughs> Basically everyone survived. Well, dang. The Collector, knowing how much growing up he still needs to do, flies off back to the cosmos. Luce gets reunited with their friends and family. Ida and King meet Camila for the first time. The gang get reunited with Hootie, who barely had a single line this whole season. Wow. And it seems like everything's back to normal. Fast forward a few years in a classic season finale time skip, and we see Luce in the human realm packing her things for college. In the Boiling Isles? Yeah, take that, Amphibia, with your heartbreaking commentary on letting go and moving on. The Owl House actually lets Luce maintain a life in both the Human Realm and the Boiling Isles. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. And as Luce packs her things, we get a beautiful end credit montage to see what everyone's up to now. Looks like Willow's become a grudgeby pro, which is, like, a wizard sport? I, I can't remember if I mentioned it before. Hunter's carving palisman now and even got himself a new bird. Funny internet videos. Amity is 
Well, I'm not 100% sure what she's doing, but she looks like she's killing it. Speaking of which, Amity's dad has been working with Rain and the former Coven heads to develop a way to remove Coven sigils as the Boiling Isles ushers in a new era of like freedom and peace and whatever. And then there's the brand new University of Wild Magic, where Luce is about to attend. Gus is here teaching people about the human realm, which is really cute, and Ida is the headmaster. Yes, rebellious, school-hating Ida is now the headmaster of a university. And King is taller. And everyone gets together to meet Luz and Camila as they make their way back to the Boiling Isles, and they all throw her a huge surprise party. Even the Collector shows up to throw a crazy cosmic fireworks show. Everyone then piles in for one last freeze frame to send things off, and that was the Owl House. And oh, wait, hold on, yeah. There it is. Now the denial starts.